sovereign granting peace from heaven let me comfort those who suffer with the comfort you have given i will tell of your great love for as long as i live singing what a faithful god Welcome to worship this morning at King of Kings. Do we have any first time visitors who are so bold as to raise their hand and let us know they're here? Because we have a pamphlet we'd like to give you. Oh, no? Okay. Um, next Friday dance is on the 19th. Um, apparently had a really nice crowd uh, on Friday night from what I understand. Quite a lot of fun. Um, there is a QR code now available to ins on the insert. So if you're one of those technical people who want to do everything by your phone, apparently you just hold your phone up to it and make your gift that way. Um, if you need a demo or you really want to do it, see Barbara. Music jams are Saturday at 1 o'clock. Our COVID numbers are holding steady. The next mobile pantry is this Thursday at 3 p.m. Lifeline screening event is coming on September 21st and is all day in Kyle Hall. Call the number on the flyer inserted in your bulletin to register. So apparently they are coming and you can get a quick health screening and they just ask that you call ahead and register. Um, karaoke, we're gonna do uh, start that. Um, on Friday, August 26th at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be on the fourth Friday. And so we're looking forward to see how that goes. Are there any other announcements for the good of the family? Yes, Chris. Come on up, use a mic. Make sure Larry got you. Do you have her on? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Up to your face. Quick, I still need every month at least 200 boxes. So when you go to the store, even if you brought one a week, I could be really helpful. Thank you. <laughs> and we use those for the food pantry, right? Okay. So whenever you go out, bring a box. <laughs> Any other announcements for the good of the family? Seeing none, I invite those who are able to stand and let's begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but we have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. 
When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life and save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army. The horse gives vain hope for victory. Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly, your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord. Upon those who wait for your steadfast love. To deliver their lives from death. And to keep them alive in time of death. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord. Our helper and our shield. Surely, our heart rejoices in you. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. Give us we place our hope in you. A reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. I saw one child out there, and she came with our biggest child. So, Dwayne, would you bring your granddaughter up here? And you can help me with this. Help me with the sermon. Help me with the children's sermon. Okay, she doesn't want to come, Dwayne. Well, you're going to help me then. Do 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 do, do 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 do. Oh, we don't have to embarrass her. Dwayne, come on up. Help me a hand. Got two kids. Okay. Now. Now what we want to do is we want to put these rocks in this container. Can you help me do that? So we get those in. Get those in. Put them all in there. Yep. Put them in there. Let's see can we, how many we can fit. Let's see. We've got more. Whole bag full. Okay. Let's start putting them in. Grab the rocks. Drop them in there. think think it's full think it's full can't get any more in right it's full okay you think it's full well oh look Dwayne I'm making more work for you here okay I'm glad you're here big guy you can help with this okay I'm gonna open it up I want you to pour them in there Ah. And not, yeah, they were on sale. Okay, let's put them in there. So that was full, right? It was full before. It was full. Now what are we doing? We're finding more room in there, right? I'm going to go down in that one spot there. Oh, my goodness. More and more and more. And it was full already, but yet more and more. Oh, my goodness. Ow, you're hurting her fingers. We're getting there. Wow. On that side, we'll get some. We're getting so much on the floor. Guess what? Your grandpa gets to clean it up.
Uh, get it in there. Come on. Fill that time up. Okay. Da da da. Da 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 da. All right, go this, okay, you think it's full now? Okay, is it, not yet? Okay, you're going to, okay, it's full, to the top. Is it full now? Okay, is it full now? Okay, you think. Okay, now, oh, you got some sand in your eyes. Oh, it's like you're on the beach. Ah, oh, it's partly wet, but it's going in there. There it goes. Shake that down. You know, I saw this done one time, and I said, they said, what's that? And I said, it looks like you're making concrete. Okay, and down it goes, and down it goes, and we stuff it in there. Okay, you think it's full? You think it's full? It's full now, right? Not yet. Not yet. You got, you're catching on. <laughs> it's amazing. It's full, but yet. Oh, it'll go in there. amazing for something that was full you can put more and more and more and more and oh my goodness so much more and it was full but yet we could put more and more and more in it now the reason we do all this and there's a reason that I did that that we all got our hands dirty okay This represents your life, this container. Hear that? This represents your life, okay? The water is trouble, it's anxiety, it's fear, it's pain. There's always room, that, always, that stuff always finds room in your life. The sand is fun. It's playing video games, it's going to the beach, it's riding your bicycle. It's playing, it's going out playing cards, dancing, going to a show. That's what the sand is, that fills in. The pebbles are those things like working and school. It's where you're, you're, you're working, you're getting ahead, and you're saving. But the big rocks that filled perp, those are the really important things. Those are relationships with those that you love, those are relationships. And the biggest rock is our relationship with God. Now, if you let your life get full of trouble and play, then there's no room for work and there's no room for school. But if you make room just for work and school and then play and trouble, then there's no room for the really big stuff. So when we did this, we put the biggest rocks in first. And that's what you have to do in your life is you put the biggest rock in first. And God, your relationship with God, is the biggest rock. And when we put that first, then there's room for everything else. So that's the lesson of this today. There's always going to be room for trouble. But if we put God first, then God will be there in all that trouble. Thanks for coming up and helping me. We're going to say a prayer. God... We thank you for all the blessings. And we ask that you help us to put you first in all things, that we come to you first in our day in prayer, and we turn to you always. And help us to remember that when we put you first, there's room for everything else. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a messy children's sermon. Ah. 
Oh, Jasmine, you get a present. You get the treasure chest. You take, take care of my mess. <laughs> I got a mess. Okay. Feel like I've been at work. Oh, by the way, Jasmine, help yourself. One thing, every time you come, you get to pick one thing. So see, you want to come back with Grandpa often, right? There you go. Thank you for helping me. Uh. Jesus talks in the gospel today that it's God's good pleasure to give us the, good, the kingdom, that God wants us to live those good lives and live in the wonderful relationship with God and one another. But then he tells you, he says, make sure your loins are girded, your belts tightened up, and your lance are lit. In essence, Jesus is telling his disciples, be prepared, because you never know you never know when God will come into your life. You never know when you'll encounter Christ in some way. I want to tell a story. It was, 19, it was 1991 going into 1992. I was sent down to a new building they were building near Philadelphia Airport, a three-story office building, and just sent down to start doing layout. And it was right before they started putting the skin on the outside of the building. And I called up the company. I said, listen, now is the time we want to load the building. We want to bring all our materials into the building, even though the roof's not on, even though. But before they put that outer skin on, in one day, two guys can load this entire building. Because the whole thing about particularly drywall is it's big and heavy. But if you can keep it in the pallets that it's delivered in, then it, you move it just like that. You can move it with a pallet jack. And we had an electric pallet jack delivered by the supplier for that day. And they came with the boom truck, and they came with three or four tractor trailers full of materials. And me and one other guy loaded that entire building one day. Now, the building was down by Philadelphia International Airport which is a wide open marshy area near the river. And the wind down there can be rather intense. And I'd heard stories of guys loading high rises and bringing the drywall up and coming in the next day after a windy night and whole skids of drywall had just disappeared and flown off into the night. So to be careful, I did two things. First thing, because I was able to move the bulk material, in bulk, everything went up on dunnage or went up on those little narrow pieces. If you go to Home Depot, you see those little strips that go in between the piles of drywall. Well, everything was on that kept on the dunnage. So we could put the, the pallet jacks, we could put the forks underneath it and move the whole load as one bulk. But we also made sure that we wrapped all the dunnage with plastic. So if water laid on the floor, like I said, there was no root. The, the, the decking was up there, but the actual roof hadn't been put on the building yet. We also made sure that if there water laid on the floor, that the drywall wouldn't soak it up like a sponge. Then, we also made sure we wrapped all these piles with plastic, and for two reasons. One was to keep it dry if water would be leaking through the building, because in December it can rain, in January it can rain, and be quite wet for quite some time. And if there's no roof, the water's just going to come pouring through the building in places, and you don't want the water pouring on the drywall. But the other reason that we did this was you don't want to let the wind blowing over the top start to lift these pieces off, because once it starts, like a deck of cards, they'll go flying right off. And I didn't want the drywall to go flying out into the marsh. So we wrapped all the drywall around taped it with, with duct tape, so they were wrapped in these nice tight packages. And we saved quite a bit of money by buying in bulk and loading in bulk. We didn't have the cost of handling all the pieces before they were actually gone to be installed. And I even, on the corners of the outside of the building, when it was out near the corners, I even had flat metal, what you call kitchen metal, wrapped around and then shot into the concrete to form like a seatbelt around these piles of drywall. 
Saturday night, I was going to a friend's house to a party that they were having before Christmas. And we hit the bridge on the uh, Veterans Highway or the 476, the Blue Route, where it goes over the Schuylkill River. And have you ever driven over a bridge and the wind gusts, you feel like suddenly you hit out in the open and the car's jumping all over the place because the wind is buffeting against the side of the car? Well, I remember driving over that bridge, both going to and coming from the party, and the car jumping all around. I'm thinking, gee, I hope things are all right down at the job. Gee, I hope things are all right, because I was the one who pushed my employers to lay, load that job. I said, now's the time to do it. It was on my word. They trusted me. Monday morning, I'm driving to work, and I'm thinking, please let everything be all right. Please let everything all be all right. And as I come around the bend, and there's the building, it looks like someone's taken a deck of cards and scattered them across the field. And there's some, these sheets laying on the road. And across the street, there's a pond in front of a Radisson Hotel. There's even a few sheets that are sticking in the shallow water of the pond, standing up on an angle. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to get fired. Work was slow. I was lucky to have a job, let alone be running a job. I'm, oh, I'm going to be fired. Remember I said about how there's always room for anxiety? Well, believe me, the anxiety found all the room in my soul that morning. And for the next five minutes, I was just that last little bend pulling into the parking lot and then pulling up outside the job. And I'm looking on the other side of the building. It looks fine. I'm thinking, oh, please, God, I'm going to go in there. It's going to be a mess. Oh, God, please, 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 please. Be prepared. Always be prepared. It's, who's a Boy Scout? Who's a Boy Scout? Larry was a Boy Scout. Anybody else here a Boy Scout? No Boy Scouts here? Oh, Vinny was a Boy Scout. Scoutmaster. And what's the motto? What's the Boy Scout motto? Be prepared. When you go camping, you take a drop cloth or, or, or a piece of plastic, something in case it rains so you can cover firewood so you can make sure if your tent leaks you put another shield over it you have a ground cloth in the tent because if the rain comes the ground gets wet and there's nothing worse than sleeping in a wet sleeping bag you drip matches in paraffin to keep them dry there was all sorts of little tricks that we learned as scouts to be prepared in case the weather turned bad because as much as i loved camping Camping in the rain and not being prepared is one miserable, miserable experience. You don't want to do it. Being prepared. Being prepared was some of the best education that I had as a young man, and I carried it through my life. Running a construction project, it was always being prepared for those eventualities, for those times that there was rain and you had an inside job, and suddenly... You had a dozen extra guys there that morning who had been rained out on their job, and their boss said, go to your job and see if you could get a day. Be prepared. Being prepared before you have children, getting the nursery done, getting the, the, the learning about how to feed a child, making sure you're stocked up or you have a diaper service. Being prepared. It comes to all a part of our life. Living in Florida. We're coming into hurricane season, and what do they tell us? Be prepared. Have some fresh water set aside. Have a camp stove or canned goods, something that if you lose power and you lose water for a while, that you can survive. Being prepared. Jesus is telling his disciples, be prepared. But not just be prepared for those earthly things. Not just being prepared for that windstorm that might come over the weekend right after you've loaded a wide open building. Jesus is telling his disciples to be prepared because you never know when God is going to come into your life. In fact, you don't even know what form that will take. It could be your neighbor knocking on your door early in the morning with a problem. It could be someone approaching you in the parking lot in need. It could be that call that comes in the middle of the night from a family member far away informing you about something that has just happened. Jesus says, 
tells his disciples to be prepared because I will come to you, the Father will come to you at the times you least expect it. I'm still learning this lesson about being prepared. I have a bad habit of when my phone rings and I don't recognize the number and I don't recognize the area code of answering with a very abrupt way, answering in sometimes a very nasty or cynical way. And I remember I was getting the kitchen cleaned up and my hands are wet and my phone rings and I pull it out of my pocket and it's slipping around because my hands are ringing and I don't recognize the area code, I don't recognize the number and I open it up and I hear, before I can get it to my ear and say anything, I hear, hello, Jim, are you there? Okay, well, let me answer this then. Yes, hello. It was our bishop, Bishop Pedro Suarez, calling me right before we had our anniversary. And if my hands hadn't been wet and I hadn't fumbled with the phone, I could have said, yeah, what do you want calling me up now? <laughs> Be prepared. You never know when God or the bishop is going to call on the phone. So how do we prepare ourselves? Well... Let's go back to that mess there in that jug. You put the biggest rock in first. You put the biggest rock in each day first. It's the first thing you put into your life each day upon working is you put in a prayer. You, you, you put in that relationship with God. You ask God to be with me. Help me to answer my phone in a pleasant way and not cuss the guy out on the other side for bothering me. Help me to encounter people that I meet on 19 in traffic who haven't learned to drive yet in a more gracious way. Help me to be kinder and more compassionate just in case you happen to be the stranger approaching me in the parking lot of the home center. You start by putting that biggest rock in first. We can put that biggest rock in first because of what God did for us through Jesus on the cross. God said, I will eliminate any excuse that you ever could make for being able to come to me. There is nothing that you can do that I haven't said you're forgiven. Please come to me. Because of what God did for, through Christ for each one of us, we are all welcomed into that relationship with God we are all invited to put the biggest rock in first. Well, I want to finish where I kind of started with that story. So I'm sitting in the parking area on the other side of the building. I've just witnessed like a mess in that field going to the building. The superintendent's coming out of the building. I said, it's a mess in there, isn't it? And he goes, no. I said, what? He goes, no, everything's good. I just walked through the whole floor. He said, you had one pile of drywall that a couple sheets got, the, the, the plastic got pulled away from the side and a couple sheets got out and are laying right next to it. He said, they didn't even break. They're just laying there like someone pulled them out and left them lay there. I said, well, what was all that mess in the field? He goes, all the roofers had put a big bundle of insulation. You know that foam insulation, that dense foam insulation? They put a big bag of it up there that must have stood four feet tall. It was all inch, inch and a half thick. He said it must have gotten rolling and broke open. And he goes, it's only 30 sheets. It looked like 130 sheets to me. But in that moment, I realized there was all the room for anxiety in my life. But I was prepared for that storm. If we have that relationship with God in our life, if that is the biggest rock that we've put into, then those storms that will come because there's always room for trouble, there's always room for anxiety, those storms that will come will be short-lived and you will set, gather, get through those storms and look back at them because I think of all the storms that have come in my life but that I can look back on right now and say, yeah, it was tough, but by the grace of God, I got through. Amen. Amen.
gospel of salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. I guess in Florida, the spirit of Christ, or the spirit of God descends like a gecko instead of a dove. I don't see that gecko running around up there. Is that okay, God? Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. invite you to be seated and we well let's start with that as we start our prayers here I want to invite those of us who are tuning in from home to know that we will we'd love to hear your prayers too and we will if you let us know we will make sure that they are prayed um, so you can email them to us or send them through Facebook Messenger or call the office and leave a voice message any way you get your prayer to us we will make sure it's prayed for you thank you now, the first thing we do when we do this, we, we share our joys, those different places in our life where God encountered. And Dwayne already shared his with me, but I'm going to ask him to share with everybody else. He has quite a big joy to share himself. Now I'm going to try this. Uh, last Saturday morning, I started my semi-truck like I've done a million times at Home Depot, and I almost met the Lord Saturday morning. I pushed in the clutch with my left hand like I've done a million times. Turned the key with my right hand, and the truck, the, tr the truck took off and hit the side of my car with me holding on to the steering wheel. It's never done this in 19 years I've been delivering for Home Depot. It must have been in gear, and it took off and hit the side of my Challenger, which I call my midlife crisis car. I uh, paid $30,000 for it. I went to bid for it online. I drove 16 hours to Texas to go get it, 16 hours back and showed up at work Monday morning. So does that mean your life crisis has now been ended? Uh, yes, yes. I, 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 don't, I don't see myself getting, getting a new car. I guess I just wanted to be like my five kids that I raised. They all had new cars, and Daddy, Dad always had a clunker. So and, I, I wanted a car with air conditioning to be like everybody else. <laughs> and if the car wouldn't have, if the truck wouldn't have hit your car, what was the next thing it was in line to hit? Yes, this is, the, this is the part I wanted to, to share with you guys. If my car wouldn't have been there and I wouldn't have got dragged four parking spaces with myself hanging outside the truck, we would have hit the gas pumps at the 7-Eleven. And we probably would have blew up Port Ritchie off the map. So talking about anxiety, I think the pastor's message to everybody this morning was anxiety. And I have to tell my employer now that owns the truck what I did. And I had no idea how they were going to react to this. Because nasty, there's nothing wrong with the truck. It's got a scratch on the front, you know. But uh, my, my car is totaled. And uh, they were so cool that I wanted to share it with you guys. Their word was, Dwayne, you need to retrain yourself. And you need to be behind the seat when you start the truck. So now when I'm out on a job site and I want the air conditioning going in the truck because I'm almost done doing the delivery, 
I now get up on, climb up into the truck, you know, it's like 10, 12 feet tall up in the air, and uh, get behind the wheel before I start the truck. But I just, uh, so I went from almost meeting the Lord, totaling out a car I've had since 09 with 60,000 miles, because I didn't like driving because it was a stick shift. At almost 60 years old, I still say to myself, what the heck was I thinking when I bought this? Because after doing a stick shift all day long, the last thing you want to do in your personal vehicle is move a stick shift around. So they ended up uh, paying the car off. I got a check for $17,600, and I bought me a, another Dodge Charger, a, a four-door. I guess I'm finally moving on as an older person in and life. And an automatic. I went from the two-door stick to a four-door, yes, automatic. God bless you guys. I wanted to share that with you guys. I just, uh, until you have a, a close encounter or an out-of-body experience at 5 o'clock in the morning, yes, it was, this was a very close call and was very serious. And, it, and it's our joy that both Port Ritchie and you are still here. Yes. Good morning. Um, Miss Lee, Briggs back here. I am so proud of her. She took the Serve Food Safe Handlers test, and she passed it, and she is now certified. So she's been working with us in the food pantry. Well, she works all over, but she's now what they call certified, and I'm so proud. Of her. You've been certified. <laughs> okay, Suzette, I know you want to share. Come on, <laughs> this is such a blessing for us. I just, I'm so grateful for all the prayers that have been said for me uh, uh, why, my, why I had my illness. And I'm so, praise God, with his help, with the, giving me these doctors that I had that gave them their talent, that gave me my surgery on April 14th, and I'm cancer-free now. Oh, amen. What a mighty God we have. Um, yes. Thank you, thank, and it's wonderful to see you. That's a joy for all of us, too. Other joys that we'd like to share? Yes, Carol. We've got three joys. Uh, we got to go home and see our grandson get married, which was amazing. And then I had a family reunion in Illinois. And coming back home in Georgia, we was on the interstate. It was pouring rain. And we came around a curve, and the traffic was stopped, and all I could see was an orange semi in front of us. And we were, we couldn't stop. It was raining so hard. So with Roger's fast instinct and the help of God, he pulled into a ravine. We went about 300 feet into a ravine. Um, we were so blessed. There were two fatalities in that wreck and numerous vehicles involved. But we're so happy to be here. Wow. God was with us. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Vinny. But, um, in a week, I'll be taking off, going up to New York, visiting my family, my kids, my sisters, my brothers, big family. It's been a long time since I've been up there, so. I'll be gone for a week. That's a wonderful joy. Thank you. Any other joys? Two weeks. Yes, Marion. Oh, Marilyn's back. Yeah, there's a joy right there. Yes, I'm back. Not all, all the way, but I'm feeling much, much better. The surgery. Can't hear you. You got to put your mouth right to it. It's, okay, here there I go. There you go. I'm back, and my surgery was a success, thank goodness. Um, I'm still kind of weakish, but I, I'm getting better and better. But I do want to thank all you people that have sent me cards, have called to see how I'm doing. And really, that really was a big joy to me to have people think about me when I'm not feeling well, but I'm doing well. And thank you all for everything. Thank you. Others? Okay, now the other side. Where are the concerns? What things are you praying for that you're, you would like to lift up here as a concern? Yes, Terry. Um, 
Uh, Claire's having surgery tomorrow at 10.15. It's a easy surgery, but it's still cancer. And we would love everybody to pray and make sure it comes out all right, which we know it will, because God is watching over her. Okay. Thank you. Other, other concerns? Yes, Elaine. Right up I'd to your like mouth. up here. Yeah. Yeah, there you got it. Please pray for the people in East Kentucky. We're having such a bad time right now. Yes. My daughter lives kind of west of that, but she said she's gone past it, and it's just horrific. So if we could all pray for them. Yeah, that whole section of the county through Kentucky into Virginia is really being hit very hard with repeated once in a thousand year storms. How do you have two of them in a week, once in a thousand years? But yeah, it's, it's bad, so we lift those people up. Other, other concerns that we wanna lift up? I wanna lift up, you got one, yes. Well, the most important thing about the trip, I forgot to say. My son is having hip surgery, my oldest son. And uh, just keep him in your prayers. Okay, and his name? Vinny. Vinny. It's easy to remember. I want to lift up my, well, my grandchildren start school next week um, in Virginia, the ones in Stafford. They're starting school. My granddaughter in Pennsylvania is starting the end of the month, and my grandson in upstate New York is starting right after Labor Day. But I wanna, it reminds me that I want to lift up all, I think Florida schools start back, or have started back? Wednesday. 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 So we lift up not just the students, but the teachers as well. Because the reason I say this, my middle daughter is a teacher. And in the midst of the pandemic, she got so fed up that rather than having a nervous breakdown, trying to care for four kids at home and getting them through their at-home um, lessons, as well as trying to manage her lessons virtually, she quit. She says, I'm done. She says, I couldn't take it anymore. Well, after a year looking for another job, the only jobs she was getting offered were teaching jobs. And she said, gee, Dad, I guess it was God really saying I need to be a teacher. I said, well, I always thought you were very gifted. And if that's what you're called to do, then that's what you need to be. So she's also starting school coming up and lift up the prayers for all teachers. They had a really rough several years. And there's three professions in our country that are seriously hurting right now. Teachers, there's 9,000 open teaching positions right now throughout our country. And it's not that there's teachers out there, they just got so fed up with the politics, with being told what they had to teach, and the, and the lot, rotten pay and uh, benefits that they went to something else. The next one is nurses. Apparently there's a shortage of nurses, not that there's nurses out there, but I have a friend who's 70 years old, it's gone back to work because they keep begging her to come in because they need nurses. And the third one, believe it or not, is pastors. There's a shortage of ministers throughout the country that uh, Another friend just retired. She was one of my classmates at seminary. She's 68 years old. She said, I figure I've been working for 50 years. We're working or going to school. So she says, I'm actually going to change my phone number so the phone stops ringing asking me to do interim work. Now, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere right now, folks. I really feel blessed to be here right now. But there's, those three professions apparently have really taken a toll over the last several years. And they're running shortages and there's usually the shortages where they're the most needed, where the nurses are the most needed, where the teachers are the most needed, where the pastors are the most needed. So I ask that we start lifting up those professionals who've been hit so hard by this. So do we have any other concerns that we want to lift today? Then let us pray. Lord, you, we thank you for being there for us, for keeping us safe in those times of eminent disaster, Lord, for being with us that we can witness to your goodness afterwards, Lord. It's such a blessing to say God was there and God 
heard my prayers. We thank you for getting us through illness and surgery. We thank you for being there with us and be, help being part of that gathering when we gather with family, when we reunion with family, that be, you are there with us, Lord. Lord, we lift up the concerns of this community here, Lord. We lift up those who are facing surgery, that, that you be with them. We lift up especially Claire and Vinnie, Lord. And we lift up all those who are now facing going back to work and having worked under unfavorable conditions, Lord. We ask that you bless them with the patience and kindness and help our society open up and recognize the importance of these people and their training in their lives. Lord, we pray all things trusting and hoping in your goodness and mercy. We pray all things trusting and hoping in your faithfulness to us. We pray all this in the name of our, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with each other. And also make your way over to the sanitation station. So that's all we're sharing is just peace.
Let us pray the offering prayer as one voice. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest, and we based on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and everlasting God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he also took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood that shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. And now let us be so bold as to pray the words as we've been taught by our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the hour, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite all to come for communion. We will, when you come forward, you'll be handed a piece of bread, which you can then dip in either cup, the d cup with the dark purple liquid in his wine, with the clear liquid is grape juice. Please, all are invited. Be seated.
Last week I shared one of the reasons I gave. I told that story about the guy who didn't smoke but carried a pack of cigarettes around to show him who was boss. And I said, that's one of the reasons I give to show wealth who's boss. Another reason that I give is as I've been working on putting God first in my life, putting the biggest rock in that jug of my life first, I recognize that part of that is giving God first what God has given to me, myself, my time, and all my possessions. So it's the grat gratefulness and then making that habit of putting God first then in all things. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now, the God of peace, the biggest rock in our life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Time to celebrate.